Sometimes when video games are being created, development teams get in over their head or a new CEO will be put on the project. Things like this are common reasons for video games getting cancelled. Today, I'm going to go over 5 games that had great potential, but never made it past development. The Mario Strikers games were a huge success, so Nintendo wanted next level games to create another sports title featuring Mario characters. What started out as Mario Volleyball, soon included wrestling elements and possibly could have been an all sports game titled Mario Spikers. This was a really cool concept and probably would have been similar to Mario Party or Mario Strikers. The next year, Nintendo reviewed what had been created so far and decided to cancel the game. A member of the development team said the game was cancelled due to violence and clashing with Nintendo's Code of Honor. I find this hard to believe because Smash Bros 64 and Melee was already out at the time. Word of Mario Spikers went quiet until 2014 when a small amount of test footage and concept art was found. Video game websites like Games Radar pointed to this animation of Waluigi stomping on Mario as a main reason for the game's cancellation. Silent Hills was planned to be the ninth installment in the survival horror franchise that first got its start on the original PlayStation. It began development in 2012 by Kojima Productions and was set to be released exclusively on the PlayStation 3. In August of 2014, a playable teaser demo was released on the PlayStation Store. In the demo, we learn that Norman Reedus is the protagonist in the game, and it was now first person opposed to the usual third person mode. During the demo, you wake up in a haunted house and are free to explore the place. It's a continuous loop as you keep going through the same door. And when you solve the main puzzle, it's revealed that this is the playable teaser for a Silent Hill game directed by Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. The Silent Hills PT demo was downloaded by more than a million gamers and received critical acclaim from video game journalists and websites. With a writer from Games Radar saying, quote, By spreading out into the real world, by forcing solutions by way of hearsay, internet whispers, and desperate rumored logic, it's become its own urban myth. A reviewer from IGN described the demo as the most genuinely frightening interactive experience in recent years. In March of 2015, it was reported that Hideo Kojima and his team planned to leave Konami after finishing Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain. Soon after, Konami removed all references to Kojima Productions from their website and any promotional material. This wasn't a good sign. In April of the same year, Assistant Director of Silent Hills Guillermo del Toro announced that the game had been cancelled. This was confirmed a day later when Norman Reedus took to Twitter saying Silent Hills was cancelled. The very same day, Konami pulled the demo from the PlayStation Store. Finally, Konami made a statement about the game saying that Silent Hills would not be continued, but they have plans to continue the franchise in the near future. After hearing this, fans were outraged and started a petition on Change.org to continue the game. It was signed by nearly 200,000 people and mentioned by Guillermo in an interview saying he hopes it can change some minds. He also mentioned in a tweet that the horror manga artist Junji Ito would have been involved in developing Silent Hills. Despite the tragic cancellation of the game, a few years later, Norman Reedus and Hideo Kojima would team up to finish what they started in Silent Hills, creating an action game titled Death Stranding that was released on the PlayStation 4 in November of 2019. The game was greatly received by fans and finally closed the door on what Konami messed up. The Flash has grown in popularity mainly due to the successful TV show, but did you know that back in 2009, we almost received a game based on the DC superhero titled The Flash, The Fastest Man Alive. 
playing as Flash, you would travel between two cities, Central City and Keystone, with each one having its own set of main storylines and side missions. You would be in an open world environment similar to Batman Arkham Asylum. A really cool thing about this game is that you make the city a better place with each mission that's completed. This sounds like a lot to take on for developers, but upcoming team Brass Studios and Bottle Rocket Entertainment were confident they could pull it off as they were backed by Warner Bros. In the game, you would start off as a rookie Flash, so you learn fighting techniques and abilities as you progress throughout the game. As far as running goes, you could travel at different speeds, also grinding on rails, running on the side of buildings, and even performing stunts while in the air. After reaching high speeds, the Flash would be able to plow through objects. While traveling through the cities, you would receive objectives through a police radio headset device. A hero rating would have been implemented in the game, encouraging players to play side missions. The life of the city relied on your hero rating. As it increased, you would see the city becoming a better place. If you failed missions or ignored them, it then becomes a darker city filled with more crime. When it comes to the game's fighting system, you can execute quick attacks and combos by hitting the correct button shown above the enemy. Main villains that appear in boss battles would have involved Mirror Master, Captain Cold, and Weather Wizard. During one mission in the game, you would run into Jay Garrick, the older version of Flash. Crash Studios wanted to get Ryan Reynolds to voice Flash, but unfortunately the game never got that far in development. Bottle Rocket Entertainment was really focused on perfecting the speed visuals within the game, but they would soon run into problems. The head of the company said they were struggling with speed when they closed, stating that the team was working with a new engine they created from scratch, and there were some cases where Flash would run so fast that he would travel to a section of the city that hadn't even loaded yet. Everyone who's seen the game during development loved it, including DC Comics. With one executive saying, quote, this is the best, smoothest running DC property we have seen to date. Despite a few flaws, the game was looking good and was set for release on the Nintendo Wii. Unfortunately, Brass Studios made a few poor business decisions, creating games like Alvin and the Chipmunks and Jumper, leading to the company going bankrupt and shutting down. After this, Bottle Rocket was still committed to the game and was looking for publishers to finish it. Because of Brass Studios owning the rights to the game, even DC pulled out of the deal because they would have had to pay Brass just for the character rights they purchased. There lies the major problem in finding support for the project. Why pay money to a failed company just to continue a game they failed to create? This led to Bottle Rocket Entertainment going out of business. Luckily, the head of the company saved footage of the game and uploaded it to YouTube in 2014. I think the game looks great, and even though it's been a few years, I still think someone should finish this project one day. Mega Man is one of my favorite gaming franchises ever created, and I've played most of the games made for the series. In 2010, Capcom began development on a new game titled Mega Man Universe. In July of that year, an animated teaser trailer that was made in stop motion was shown off for Mega Man Universe. It was really creative, featuring Ryu from Street Fighter and King Arthur from the Ghost and Goblin series. This trailer really brought back that classic Capcom feel. The game was set to be a 3D side-scrolling action platformer and to be released on the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade for digital download. A big element of Mega Man Universe was that it would allow players to create levels and customize their own characters. Artist and producer of Mega Man, Kaiji Inafuni, said, quote, We wanted to preserve as much as we can of the classic 8-bit Mega Man feel while allowing players to project their own Mega Man onto the game. 
this sounds great to me, and I really like the direction they were taking with this game. The game's development team consisted of Capcom members who worked on the first six Mega Man games. That's always good to hear when companies have a big idea. On September 2nd of 2010, a couple of gameplay trailers were released and producers were asking for feedback from the fans. An interesting fact about the game is that it would have been the first to be called Mega Man in Japan besides the usual title of Rockman. The game was moving along, but unfortunately four months after the trailers were released, producer Kaiji Inafuni left the company. Capcom reported that even though there hasn't been any news on the game, it was not cancelled and is still in development. Mega Man Universe received strong negative feedback about unresponsive controls and the game's art direction. Despite Capcom's report that the game was still in development, it was announced on March 31st of 2011 that Mega Man Universe was cancelled due to various circumstances. Star Wars 1313 was first thought up in 2009 and began development in 2012 under LucasArts. It was based around Boba Fett, centered in level 1313, a metropolis within the planet Coruscant. It was said to have a more adult theme and storylines. The game would have been rated M for Mature, released on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. You would start off as an unknown bounty hunter who would soon be killed by Boba Fett. Following this, you would now take control as Boba Fett throughout the rest of the game. It was first revealed at E3 in June of 2012, showing off fast-paced combat that relied on skill and utilization of multiple weapons. Later on that year at GamesCon, a trailer was shown off of the game. At the beginning of development, the game was inspired by Grand Theft Auto, but this was changed due to the idea being too complex. Fans enjoyed the trailer and were excited, so LucasArts continued production. However, months later, George Lucas announced that he was selling his company to Disney. Despite the announcement, staff continued to improve the game and made demos to show off to new shareholders. Word of the game went quiet until April 3rd of 2013, when Disney shut down LucasArts and laid off all employees of the company. Cancellation of the game was later confirmed January of the next year, when it was reported that Disney abandoned the 1313 trademark. Even though the game didn't get finished, it was named as Game of the Year by Geek.com. This speaks to how amazing the game looked. I remember hearing about Star Wars 1313 and watching the trailers that looked spectacular. I could really tell that the development team put all they had into this and this would have been one of the best games of all time. I was one of the many fans waiting for the game's release and was sad to hear of its cancellation. Let me know in the comments down below any games that you were really excited for, but they got cancelled along the way. If you enjoy this video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, stay up late productions.